Hello, this is Homer Knox of MenTeachingMen.com. In this video, I'm going to be teaching on the subject of repentance. The New American Standard and King James Bibles will be used for our scripture translation in this video, and there will be several discussion questions at the end of this video. I'm at the Life Center in Bradenton, Florida. The Life Center is a Christian residential men's discipleship program, and I'm always glad, I'm always glad to be working with the men. The subject that I'm going to be teaching on in this video is repentance. And to be a Christian, you have to repent. And so we're going to be looking at that on this video. Repentance, it means to turn. And there's two words for repentance in the Bible. First meaning of the word repentance. Me tame lomia, a change of mind, such as to produce regret or even remorse on the account of sin, but not necessarily a change of heart. Matthew, the 27th chapter, the third verse. Then when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that he had been condemned, he felt remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Judas had regret. He made restitution. Matthew, the 27th chapter, the fifth verse. And he threw the pieces of silver into the temple sanctuary and departed. And he went away and hanged himself. He had regret. He made restitution but he never asked forgiveness. That's a crucial step. What would Jesus have done with that? He'd forgiven him just like that, wouldn't he? But he never asked that. And so he hung himself. The second word for uh, repentance is... Second meaning of the word repentance. Metanoio, to change one's mind and purpose and life after receiving knowledge. And to which the remission of sin is promised. And we're going to look at the steps of repentance here. Repentance is to turn, turn. First step of repentance is a change of mind. A change of mind. What have I done? I've screwed up. What have I done? I've sinned. And we all had that at some point, didn't we? On things we've done, I messed up. Second step of repentance is a hatred of the sin. I don't ever want to do this again. We say that all the time, don't we? I don't ever want to do this again. Sometimes we keep falling back in. Third step of repentance, asking forgiveness. Forgiveness by the blood of Jesus. Now, restitution could be part of this. In the 12-step program, restitution is mentioned. So you might have to restore on this. Fourth step of repentance is our ongoing endeavor to walk in holiness. I've sinned. I know it. I hate this sin. I've asked forgiveness. I've, re I've restored if I had to. And now I'm going to try to do better. All make sense? A summary of the steps of repentance. Number one is a change of mind and purpose. Number two is a hatred of the sin. Number three, asking forgiveness and possibly restoring. And number four is our endeavor to walk in holiness. God's desire is for us to repent. Second Peter, the third chapter, the ninth verse. But is patient toward you not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. He says all, doesn't he? All for all. Jesus wants everyone to get saved. Luke, the fifth chapter, the 32nd verse. Jesus is talking. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. But what? Sinners to repentance, to repent. Ezekiel, the 14th chapter, the sixth verse. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, Repent and turn away from your idols and turn your faces away from all your abominations. Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, the 32nd verse. For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies, declares the Lord God. Therefore, repent and live. Matthew, the 4th chapter, the 17th verse. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew, the 11th chapter, the 20th verse. Then he began to denounce the cities in which most of his miracles were done because they did not repent. Because they did not what? They did not repent. Luke, the 13th chapter, the third verse. Jesus is talking. I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. There was a bad deal there with the tower falling. They questioned him about it. He didn't answer that. He just said, you need to repent. Acts, the third chapter, the 19th verse. The Apostle Peter is talking. Therefore repent and return, so that your sins may be wiped away, in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. There's great 
blessing in repentance. Great blessing, great blessings. Acts, the 17th chapter, the 30th verse. The Apostle Paul is talking. Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to men that all people everywhere should repent. That all, that all, that all, everywhere should repent. God is looking for repentance from sinners. Revelation, the second chapter, the 21st verse. I gave her time to repent, and she did not want to repent of her immorality. And there's a deadline on repentance, isn't it? We're not going to live forever. A lot of us are going to live longer lives, some are shorter lives. There have been a ton of men in this program that have died. And so we're not going to live forever. I won't be teaching forever. I'll be moving on at some point. And so there's a time to repent. Time to repent. Romans, the second chapter, the fourth verse. Or do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and tolerance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance? Well, who leads us to repentance? The Holy Spirit, doesn't he? The Holy Spirit convicts of sin. He convicts us of sin, and he leads us to repentance. After all those scriptures, we know that God wants us to repent, doesn't he? Yeah. Pretty clear. Let's talk about the first step, change of mind. Step one of repentance is a change of mind. Psalm, the 51st chapter, the 4th verse. King David is speaking. Against you, you only, I have sinned and done evil in your sight. Psalm, the 51st chapter, the 5th verse. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Why well, is talking about the Adam curse, the Adamic curse? When Adam sinned, because we are the seed of Adam, we got that sin, we inherited that sin. Psalm, the 109th chapter, the 22nd verse. For I am afflicted and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. Well, this guy's feeling his sin, isn't he? He's feeling that. Step two of repentance, a hatred of the sin. Romans, the 12th chapter, the 9th verse. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Psalm, the 97th chapter, the 10th verse. Hate evil, you who love the Lord. Revelation, the 2nd chapter, the 6th verse. Jesus is talking to the church of Ephesus. Yet, this you do have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolonians, which I also hate. And so the second step is to hate sin. At some point, did you come to that? You hated sin? You hated doing what you were doing? I did. I did. I'm talking about forgiveness. Now we're going to ask for forgiveness. We've repented. We've realized we sin. We hate the sin. And we want to move on. You need to get forgiveness. Third step. Step number three of repentance. Seeking forgiveness. Psalm, the 51st chapter, the 7th verse. Purify me with hassop and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Psalm, the 51st chapter, the 10th verse. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Asking forgiveness here. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is what? He's faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise God. Faithful. He's faithful. Psalm, the 51st chapter, the first verse. King David is talking. Be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Asking forgiveness. And finally, Luke 15, 21. Luke, the 15th chapter, the 21st verse. The prodigal son. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Asking forgiveness. You've all done that, right? Amen. You've all asked Jesus to forgive you, right? Step number four of repentance. An ongoing endeavor to walk in holiness. Let's talk about the ongoing endeavor to walk in holiness. First John, the second chapter, the sixth verse. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. Talking about Jesus here, as he walked. First John, the first chapter, the seventh verse. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. All sin. I like that fellowship with one another. It's real easy to have fellowship with people that are forgiven, aren't they? It's real easy. Colossians, the second chapter, the sixth verse. Therefore, as you have received 
Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk in him. So walk in him. We used to, in our vacation for our family, we used to go to Camp Hebron in Halifax, Pennsylvania. It was a Mennonite camp. We have a Mennonite background, and so we'd go to summer camp with the Mennonites. It was great. It was just wonderful. And we had our older son was just a piece of work. Matter of fact, he was so much a piece of work, he was too much for Bonnie and me. It was just too much. And so one of the things we tried to do with him is say, well, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Every time we'd have these little things, what would Jesus do? And so I talked to the speaker at the camp one time, and uh, he was a counselor, he was a pastor, but he was a counselor, and he said, look, Homer, your boy's a kid. He's not Jesus. He's not going to do what Jesus did. He's going to do what kids do. And you need to have an understanding of that. And that helped me a lot. It really helped me a lot. Your walk with Jesus depends on your age. It depends on your maturity. And it depends on your background. My wife has a great background. She has a Christian background, got saved fairly young. Okay? And she has a great background. And because of that, she has things, she has a heart that's really nice. She's, uh, uh, she's a wonderful person, but, but that background has really helped her. My background, I was all screwed up. My family was screwed up, and I was screwed up till I got saved. And so that background is harder. I have stuff in me that it's harder to move on sometimes on some things. You know, whatever background you had, once you've been saved, Jesus is going to start all over. But I don't have that background that she has of faithfulness. I don't have the background of, of all those years in church before me and all that. She has a greater background. Step number four of repentance, an ongoing walk of holiness. Philippians, the third chapter, the 14th verse. I press on to the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Matthew, the third chapter, the 8th verse. Therefore, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Now let's talk about, oops, I messed up. You guys mess up here? Yeah. I mess up all the time. I mess up all the time. And we all do oops. We all do. And if you do oops, you're not special. You're just one of the rest of us. One of the rest of us. Well, what do we do? We do an oops. What do we do? Well, we go back and review the steps. We ask forgiveness. We hate, we, you know, we, we, we think about what we've done and how that all works in our relationship. And then we ask forgiveness and then we try to do better. Realize you've sinned. Ask forgiveness. Maybe you have to restore. That restore, I've taught on this before, that's real big deal. That's a real big deal. And try to do better. That restoring will hinder you in your spiritual growth. You won't get as far as you could be. And it, you won't get the heart and the soul all where it should be without that restoration. Hey, I know guys in this program. I've been in this program since t teaching here, I think since 2002. And I know guys that just owe thousands. They could never pay it back in years and years and years. And what they have to do is to just make a start. Just make a start. Thousands and thousands. Just make a start. And that, that will work through you. God will notice that. You want to try to complete it, but sometimes that's impossible. Impossible in a short period of time. We all make mistakes. But you know, the longer we walk with Jesus, the less mistakes we make. I make a lot less oops now than I did when I first got saved. Because I'm more mature now. I'm more, I've been in the Lord longer. I have more faith now. All those things build. Precept upon precept is what they say. All those things build. And so my life is better on a spiritual walk because I don't do as many of those things I used to. Let's talk about spiritual examples of repentance. Job, the 42nd chapter, the 6th verse. Therefore I retract and I repent in dust and ashes. But he repents here. God says, you didn't speak right about me. And so in this scripture, he repents. Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, the 14th verse. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Luke, the 19th chapter, the eighth verse. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, will give back four times as much. He made repentance and he made restitution. He changed so much that God used him to write a book in the New Testament, Matthew. 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter, the 13th verse. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord also has taken away your sin. You shall not die. It didn't take long, did it? Just one sentence here. It's got forgiveness right away. 
David did adultery. He did murder. It was over a period of time because the baby was born in the adultery. And so when David realized what he did, and someone date Nathan had to tell him what he did, and he repented just like that. He realized what he did. He's going to... We're going to talk about repent of repentance. Repenting of repentance. is someone that turns back to the world. And we have scriptural examples in that. Well, the first one is Pharaoh. Exodus the 8th chapter, the 8th verse. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he remove the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may sacrifice to the Lord. Exodus the 8th chapter, the 15th verse. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them, as the Lord had said. He's repented. Of, what, what happened to him? Firstborn was killed, lost his army in the, in the Red Sea, came away a sorry guy. Sorry guy. Let's talk about Lot's wife, Sod and Gabor. Do we know that story? You all know that story? Genesis, the 19th chapter, the 15th verse. When morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Up! Take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. Genesis, the 19th chapter, the 17th verse. When they had brought them outside, one said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you and do not stay anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains or you will be swept away. Genesis, the 19th chapter, the 26th verse. But his, Lot's, wife from behind him looked back. And she became a pillar of salt. A pillar. So, you know, when you're moving forward, move forward. Don't look back. Sometimes you have to cross all those bridges. You have to destroy all those bridges that allow you to go back. Do you understand what that means? You know, you have relationships that are hurting you. They're killing you. You have to break them off at least for a while. To break that phone thing off, you have to break whatever's dragging you in. You've got to break that off. Sometimes you can renew that, and other times you can't. We got by the name of Balaam. Do you all know Balaam here? What happened on Balaam? Well, Balaam was a prophet of God. Numbers, the 22nd chapter, the 12th verse. God said to Balaam, Do not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. Numbers, the 22nd chapter, the 21st verse. So Balaam arose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the leaders of Moab. Numbers, the 22nd chapter, the 22nd verse. But God was angry because he was going, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. Numbers, the 22nd chapter, the 34th verse. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know that you were standing in the way against me. And the angel told him to go ahead, but only speak what God told him. And so he did that. But what he did is he advised the, the Midian people to send their women over to the camp of Israel to entice them. And that's what happened. And then they started fooling with the women. Then they started offering sacrifices to their women's God. Numbers, the 31st chapter, verses 7 to 8. So they, Israel, made war against Midian. They also killed Balaam, the son of Beor, with the sword. My, oh my. Let's talk about Demas. Do you know who Demas is? Familiar with Demas? <clears throat> Demas is a guy in the New Testament that was a fellow or laborer with the Apostle Paul. 2 Timothy, the 4th chapter, the 10th verse. For Demas, having loved this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonia. Hebrews, the 6th chapter, the 6th verse. Believers that have fallen away, it is impossible to renew them again to repentance, since they again crucified of themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. This is a big time scripture. You need to memorize this or you need to mark this down. And here's what it says. If you fall away, it's difficult to get you back in the fold again. Here it says impossible. I sort of have seen it a little bit. And I didn't believe this scripture when I first got saved. I didn't think it was correct. People that have gone crazy and gone out, not just here, other places I've been, they don't get renewed. They don't get renewed. What a shame. What a shame. We had a woman up in church, we were up in Lancaster, and she went bazonker with somebody's husband, and you know, she left the church, she's all, she's been all screwed up all these years, her kids are screwed up, impossible to renew. Hebrews 6 chapter, the ninth verse. But, beloved, we are convinced of better things concerning you. We are convinced of better things. You can, you can hold steady, you can walk in the faith, you can walk with God. 
I'm almost always shocked, and not always, but I'm almost always shocked when men leave this program and go back into the sinful life. I, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. And uh, it's always, almost always a surprise for me. It's always a surprise. And I drive down 14th Street and I see them. A lot, not all of them, but I see a lot of them over time. And it's just a shock. It's just a shock. You're in this program to get it right. And some of you may be getting it right for the first time in your life. I don't know. And with Jesus and with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can get it right. You can succeed and be successful here. And I'm so thankful that Jesus has made a way for me and for you to receive forgiveness and eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Are you thankful? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, that you allow us to repent and have the opportunity to know you as our personal Savior for the forgiveness of our sins. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the Men Teaching Men YouTube channel. Hello friends, this is Homer Knox again. I hope you enjoyed this video teaching. The question I have for you is, are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? And are you saved? If not, why not? Why not? Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He suffered and died under Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He was buried and he rose from the dead on the third day after burial. And he's ascended into heaven according to the scriptures. There is salvation in no one else. No one else. And so if this has stirred your heart and you'd like to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior. Come into my heart. Please forgive me of all my sins, all my sins. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for making me a new creature. And thank you for the Holy Spirit now living inside of me. Amen and amen. If you prayed this prayer for the first time from your heart, you're now born again. You're a Christian. Welcome. Welcome to the family. If you prayed this prayer after slipping away, you're now back in the fold. You're part of the kingdom. Welcome. Congratulations. There's another teaching on the menteachingmen.com website entitled, I Just Got Saved, Now What? And that video will help you on your new walk with Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.